Uh, so once again, welcome to our webinar. Uh, my name is Veronica and a marketing manager at Marosta. I would also like to introduce our new head of partnerships, Stephen Andrews, who is on the call with us. So if you have any questions related to Marosa or how we can help your business comply with VET regulations, just please reach out to him. And special thanks to our partner, Upay, for helping us organize this free webinar for you. And just before we start, I would like to remind you of our housekeeping rules. So this session will be recorded and shared with you after the webinar, including the presentation. But if you have any questions, please use the Q&A function or chat, and we will address them at our dedicated sessions. So let's start with the webinar. Today, we will cover briefly who we are, how can we help you. We will explain different e-invoicing scenarios across Europe, including different tax control models and some practical examples. And your presenter today is Alexia Garcia, our senior tax advisor and our knowledge lead. She's been with us for a couple of years and she works closely with our compliance team and, re and is responsible for keeping our team, but also different external audiences updated on VAT changes and implementing internal training actions. But let me just stop talking and let the floor to Alexia. Thank you, Veronica, for your nice introduction. And thank you also everyone for attending this webinar. So the world of electronic invoicing may seem complex if we look at it from a technical perspective, or at least for those of us who are not very IT skilled. However, in this webinar, we will try and simplify the fundamentals of electronic invoicing, making it accessible to everyone. We will cover what an electronic invoice is, what is not, how it works, why it is so important lately. So our goal is to provide you with an overview of the electronic invoicing world, how it is at the moment, and also how we see the future. We are not trying to be very country specific, although we may refer to some country examples, how they are implementing uh, invoicing or e-reporting. So let's start with the very basics. And the first question we need to address is, what is an electronic invoice? Well, the formal definition is that it is an invoice that has been issued, transmitted and, re and received in a structured electronic format which allows for its automatic and electronic processing. So the, this may seem complex, but the key concepts here are really these two that are on the slide. So we have a structured electronic format, and it also must allow for the automatic and electronic processing of the invoice data. The main goal of an electronic invoice is to process all this data automatically. This is why even if some documents may seem uh, of an electronic nature, they are not really electronic. In the, in the screen, you can see in the left side what looks like a classic invoice. It may, it may be in a PDF format, it's, it may be a, a scanned copy of a paper invoice, or even in, a, in an Excel format. And we, as a suppliers, we may send it to our customers via email. So we may think this is an, an electronic way of transmitting this electronic invoice or this form, this uh, invoice in electronic format. However, this does not qualify as an electronic invoice. Why? Because it does not have a structured electronic format inside, and because it does not allow for the automatic and electronic processing of the data inside the, the invoice. So on the um, right side of the screen, you can see how a real electronic invoice looks like. It is not nice, to, not nice to see for the human eye because basically we cannot understand anything from there, but this is the machine readable language, what allows for the automatic processing of the invoice data. So it could be either an XML file, a JSON file, or any other of these machine-readable languages that exist at the moment. 
And as a way of example and to emphasize this idea, you can see in this small circle as an extract of, of this, um, this specific language, which is called a time stamp. This is a universal way of representing times and dates. So in this extract over there, basically it contains the information of the exact moment where the invoice was issued, the exact day, the exact time, the exact hour, even the second where it was issued. Even though for us it says nothing, this is um, a, uh, an extract of information that machines can read and understand universally. So moving on to our next slide. Important question. So what are the benefits of using electronic invoices? One key benefit is that they are automatically issued and received. This, mean, uh, this means automation as opposed to the manual processing of invoices. Uh, you know, companies have full teams involved in the manual processing of invoices issued, invoices received, key in data, uh, recording it in, in internal systems, ERPs, billing systems. Some companies may use OCR tools, but these are not always so reliable. So the advantage of electronic invoices is, is uh, clear here. It saves time and also uh, it ensures the accuracy of the information. Second uh, benefit, it allows for faster processing and multiple connections. So the structured um, electronic format of invoices offers the possibility of doing multiple connections with other tools such as uh, ERP systems, banks, data analytics tools. So in summary, this opens the door to a world of possibilities in data processing and it saves a significant amount of time. As a third benefit to, to comment is the significant reduction of costs. The French tax administration, uh, France is one of the countries that uh, has al already approved the implementation of uh, electronic invoices. Um, so this uh, government uh, made a, a research uh, previous to the introduction of electronic invoices. And in this research, they said that uh, the cost of a classic invoice is uh, on average is between 12 to 13 euros, whereas the cost of an electronic invoice, it's only two euros. So it's a significant difference. You can imagine electronic invoices can um, say, uh, save a lot of costs in printing, postage, intra-office routing, archiving, and also human resources. And just to mention one uh, more benefit, it provides visibility visibility basically of your business data. So being able of having clean and structured data allows you to do much more data analysis, run dashboards, and all of this allows you to also make business predictions and business predictions that are more accurate. So now moving on to the next item. But why now? Why electronic invoices are so relevant now? The straightforward answer is because there is a big regulatory trend. So here it is important to make a distinction between voluntary and mandate invoicing. If we remain in the area of the voluntary use of electronic invoices, there are many factors that explain why electronic invoices um, or their use is spreading all over the world between companies. Just to mention some of those factors, you can think first of all the benefits we have listed in our previous slide. Second, also the advance of technology and also the increase of service providers that, uh, that allow for these solutions. And third, and very importantly, the role that play organizations like Pepol in allowing a frame of interoperability for the exchange of invo electronic invoices and other, invo other business documents across the world. So in Europe, for example, the, in the Nordic countries, businesses have been using electronic invoices on a voluntary basis for so many years now. But going back to our question, why now? Why it is so relevant now? As I already advanced, it is a regulatory trend. This means that 
not only businesses see the advantages of electronic invoices, but also the tax authorities, the governments see these advantages. And they um, and for them, electronic invoices are a very powerful tool to fight against VAT fraud and to reduce the VAT gap. And this is why, uh, well, they are mandating, requiring um, companies uh, to issue electronic invoices in, in B2B transactions. But when we talk about the e-invoicing mandates, we must connect them with the digital reporting. This basically means that when the tax authorities require you to issue an electronic invoice, they also want you to report all this transaction data to them. So as you already have it in this uh, electronic structure format, and it is so easy to share with them, they now will require you to um, report uh, all your transactions on a transaction basis. And um, again, uh, on this big regulatory trend, continuing with this topic, particularly in Europe, this trend has been increasing over the last months after the release of a legislative proposal that is called VAT in the Digital Age, or BIDA in short. This le legislative package um, plans to make electronic invoices the standard, as opposed to the exception that they may seem nowadays. Also, BIDA plans to introduce a mandate on electronic invoices for intra-community transactions, while the member states will uh, have a room of decision on whether to implement them or not for domestic transactions. And how are member states reacting to, to this legislative proposal? Well, the truth is that member states are very keen on electronic invoices. As I, we have just mentioned, they are a powerful tool in their hands. So over the last year, many countries have uh, announced their plans or even approved already the mandate of electronic invoices for domestic transactions, anticipating uh, to be there with, with these plans. So in the slide, in the image, you can see uh, a timeline with um, the countries that have already implemented e invoicing and some of them uh, have approved it but not yet implemented and some of them have just announced it. To mention some of them, we have Latin American countries where uh, they have required electronic invoicing from for many years now. In Europe, uh, Italy is one of the first countries in requiring e-invoicing in B2B transactions. And then we have other countries uh, that have already approved uh, e-invoicing uh, like Poland, France, Spain, Germany. For example, the case of Romania, they have approved it and it's starting now in January this year. So we see the trend is uh, clear. Governments are moving towards e-invoicing and, e and the reporting of these invoices. And all this trend will crystallize approximately by 2013 when uh, BIDA, this legislative proposal, uh, is implemented and, and, and takes effect um, and e-invoices will be generalized and, and the standard. So what can we expect uh, as for the uh, scope of uh, electronic invoices mandates. Again, we are not country specific, but these are some uh, a general overview of what we are seeing um, based on the countries that have already approved these mandates. So we have um, first question we we can we can make is does they these mandates impact to non-established businesses? Well, first of all, we may need to uh, reply or explain what is considered a non-established business. To take the example of a company that is involved in the fuel cars industry, um, like I understand is the case of, for many of you, and probably many of you have VAT registrations in countries other than your country of establishment. 
So let's imagine a Spanish company involved in this fuel car services. Um, it's a Spanish company uh, and they provide these services in Germany, for example. So they have a VAT registration in Germany. Since they don't have um, other more um, resources uh, than just a VAT number in Germany, they are considered as a non-established company in Germany. So for, from a German perspective, this Spanish company is a non-established company. So the question is, does e-invoicing impact on this uh, non-established company? Well, the general reply, the straightforward reply is that no. Again, we will need to check country by country how they are implementing. But the truth is that for the moment, um, in most countries uh, where the e-invoicing mandate is uh, is being implemented, non-established companies do not need to issue electronic invoices. They are outside of this mandate. However, and this is an important uh, caveat, um, all these countries implementing mandates uh, of e-invoices they also um, implement some real-time reporting obligation that it does apply to non-established companies. So instead of um, mandating uh, these companies to issue an electronic invoice, they say, okay, you can issue your invoice normally, but then you will need to report me this invoice uh, data, this uh, all this transaction data in real time or almost real time after its issuance. So in the end, the efforts uh, of putting all this invoice data in an XML format and report it almost in real time um, to the tax authority will be a very similar effort as if uh, you would need to issue electronic invoices. And what transactions are usually covered by e-invoicing mandates? Well, you can see there in this in the slide the main types of transactions that we have, uh, B2B, B2G, and B2C. So in the case of the B2G um, transactions, this is um, invoices issued by businesses to the government. The truth is that most of the uh, European countries have mandated el the electronic invoices in, in this area. And this trend is also now expanding to the B2B domestic transactions. Concerning the B2C, in this case, uh, this refers to invoices issued to, to private individuals, to final customers. Normally, these are left aside of the e-invoicing mandate, not covered by it. But again, um, we must be careful here because many countries re will require the real-time reporting of these B2C transactions. So again, uh, a special effort on, 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 this, on doing a reporting at a transaction level. So these are basically the key elements to, to check. In, in our website, uh, there's a, a link available in, in the slide to our overview about the status of e-invoicing in, in Europe. So basically, we have split it, um, what are the current plans, if implemented or not, country by country, um, split it on B2B and, and B2G. So you can check there uh, for more information about any particular country. And well, to make a recap of the webinar so far, we have um, explained what is an electronic invoice, what is not, what are the benefits of using e-invoicing and why it is so relevant lately. Now let's focus on the mechanics and why um, on, on or, or let's take a more practical uh, perspective on, on the topic. So when it comes to the e-invoicing exchange between a supplier and a customer, interoperability is crucial. This means that both supplier and customer must be connected to the same network, delivery network, it's called, and also to exchange the documents, the invoices, in the same structured way. So, so the, the customer uh, can understand what is receiving from the supplier. Here again, we must differentiate between what is the voluntary use of electronic invoices and the mandatory use of e invoices, where a government already sets um, uh, certain rules about how electronic invoices must be issued and how they must exchange. Um, but 
Remaining on this uh, voluntary use of electronic invoices, we have what is called the four corner model. That's what you can see in, in the screen. It's very simple idea. We have a corner one, which is the supplier, uh, corner four, which is the customer, and each of them have their own service providers and they are all connected in the same delivery network. So the service supplier, um, the service supplier of the sorry, the, yeah, the service supplier of the corner one, the supplier, uh, will prepare the electronic invoice and send it to the service provider of the customer. They are all connected in the same network, so they can easily exchange these invoices. And also uh, the corner two will uh, know where to send this invoice because the corner three uh, for the customer will be uh, noted in a directory. So basically, uh, this this service provider will look up uh, this address of the recipient of the invoice in this common directory and will be able to send this invoice. Mm, and we cannot talk about the four corner model without mentioning PEPOL, which is a non-profit organization, uh, part public and also part uh, formed by uh, private stake uh, stakeholders. And in fact, they are who came up with this four corner model. So PEPOL plays a very important role in, in ensuring the in, that there is this um, interoperability framework between different countries, be between different service providers. So they can uh, exchange invoices between different countries and between um, different service providers. So they work as a delivery network and they are a standard, they are international and interoperable. And they are who came up with this four corner model. Continuing uh, talking about these delivery networks, you, you see in the slide, we have different channels. We have public channels and private channels. When we refer to channels, it's the same. We refer to this delivery network, this ambience where invoices can be exchanged. In a, in a compatible way. So for the public channels, um, we just talk about PEPOL. Uh, it's, we, we say it's a public channel because service providers can become an authorized PEPOL service provider, so be connected to this network. Uh, and service provider in different, can, uh, in different countries um, will be just connected and will be able to exchange invoices between them. As um, this is for the voluntary use of uh, electronic invoices. Also, continuing on the voluntary use of uh, e invoices, we have other channels that are private. We have the example of EDI or SAP Ariba. EDI, for example, is very used in by large supermarket chains. So, for these are private. Uh, channels. Basically, suppliers and customers must be connected to these uh, private channels, these, uh, these companies that offer these e invoicing services to be able to exchange the e invoices. Now, if we go back to the public channels, um, you see Corus Pro and Factura E in the slide. These are just examples that apply when e invoicing is mandated. There is uh, an obligation uh, from, from a government to issue electronic invoices. So we have Corus Pro, which is the French uh, platform for electronic invoices, and also Factura E, um, which is the Spanish platform for, um, for e invoices. Concerning the syntax and the semantics, uh, I will not stop by on technicalities, but would like just to mention that the EN16931 that you can see there, this reference, it, uh, it is the European standard for electronic invoices. So in Europe, we have um, a, a standard format uh, that uh, member states will need to comply with, particularly when, uh, when as they implement invoicing mandates. And we have just seen the four corner model. We said that it basically works mainly when trading partners agree on the voluntary use of electronic invoices. But now we need to talk about the fifth corner model, which uh, appears basically when uh, we talk about an e-invoicing mandate. And this fifth corner is 
of course, the tax authorities. So basically, when the tax authority is involved either on the issuance of the invoice or maybe perform some controls and validations um, previous to approve the invoice, we see this fifth or even sixth corner, if we take into account the, the platform of the tax authorities and the tax authorities itself uh, to which the information is reported. Um, so we have this, this new model uh, where tax authorities uh, appear. Just to show you a real life example, this is how um, the mandate of electronic invoices will work in France. Uh, you see the model is a bit, the structure is a bit different, but the idea is the same. We have a supplier and a buyer. Uh, we have a service providers, we have a public portal, and finally all this information that in the end will be reported to the tax administration in a way or another. And it is important to understand here that adding this fifth corner means basically that you will need to report all your invoice data to the tax authorities. This means reporting information at a transaction level. And about this, um, this slide uh, considers the, the main tax control models or CTC models that we can see or we can identify nowadays on e-invoicing mandates around the world. We, depending on the approach took uh, by, the, by the governments, by the authorities, depending on, on how they are uh, involved in, in, in the e-invoicing checks and, and reporting, we can see a clearance model, we can see a centralized model or a post-audit model. Concerning the clearance model, this is, uh, well, this basically implies that the tax authority must validate and approve the electronic invoice before or uh, sending it to the, to the customer. In a centralized model, we will identify the existence of a public platform through which e-invoices are exchanged between suppliers and customers. And also the tax authority may be involved in the issuance of the invoice. This is the, the case, for example, of the Italian e-invoicing mandate, or even of uh, Romania um, after 1st July this year. In the post-audit model or real-time reporting model, here the supplier will directly issue the invoice and send it to the customer, but the reporting will be done afterwards. So the tax authority will check this invoice after it's issued. This is why it is reported post-issuance. So here we are not talking about legal categories, but they just help us to understand how governments are implementing this, um, this reporting, this control or this e-invoicing mandates in, in, in across the world. Okay, so as from now, we will see how do we see the future? How do we see all these trends crystallizing in the future? So how this e-invoicing and e-reporting trend will change our finance teams? We can uh, comment on, on these three different bullet points. First of all, uh, we expect that the billing and tax reporting teams um, come together. So because of this fifth corner, which is basically the tax authorities getting involved on the issuance of your invoices or maybe checking them, performing validations uh, of uh, the, the, your data at a transaction level, we will, uh, we will see that the tax teams with all the VAT knowledge, the tax knowledge, will need to join forces with the billing teams in charge of all the accounting and issuance and receiving of invoices in, in companies. Even here, we could add a third team, which is uh, the software, the, the IT people who, who will be required now more and more in, in the future in order to produce uh, these structured uh, electronic formats that the, that the tax authorities are requiring. Also, we can expect that the usual bad return work changes. So now we have this uh, 
classic reporting of uh, all of our transactions amounts in a BET return. So basically we put all the totals of the transactions performed during a reporting period, which can be a month, a quarter or even a year. And we put it all together and report it in a VET return. Of course, we pay the, v the corresponding VET. But we will see there is a, a move towards a real time reporting. This is the reporting of your transaction data in real time. And this is connected with the last uh, bullet point, which is data validation and that data quality will be key. And here we can differentiate two ideas. I will move uh, to the next slide to comment on this. So we said data validation and data quality. So as we move towards this real time reporting approach, uh, the VET teams will need to adapt to this. So it will require to validate and correct issues in real time, because as we report information to the tax authorities platforms, they will give us feedback, maybe error messages. So we will need to be able to assess this, um, these messages, this maybe con handling errors in also in real time. So it will be essential that um, the tax and billing teams uh, are ready to handle all this uh, error correction. On the a second idea, uh, it's also that while VAT returns are still around and, and we expect that it is still for a long time, it will also be essential that all the data that you have transmitted to the tax administration in your real time reporting uh, matches the information that you are reporting in your VAT returns. Because otherwise, um, this will lead to questions from the tax authorities, uh, error messages, etc. So it will be uh, essential to, to automate this reconciliation of your data. If there is a mismatch, you will need to solve it. So in the end, this is good news because uh, the quality of your data will going to improve as validations and checks are, are made at a transaction level. And just to finalize this idea with an example from the from the fuel card industry. Sorry. Uh, so let's imagine again our uh, Spanish company Alpha involved in the fuel car services. Um, they they are VAT registered in Member State 2 and in Member State 3. Uh, I have not included any particular country, just not to be country specific. We are just thinking about how we see future. Uh, so imagine uh, because of the services that Alpha provides in these two countries, they are already VAT registered in, in those countries. Since they are VAT registered there, they know they need to comply with the domestic rules for issuing an invoice. They must comply also uh, with the BAT rules um, concerning the particular VAT rate they need to apply. But from now on, uh, this alpha company will also need to check if there is any electronic invoicing requiring, uh, requir requirement implemented in Member State 2 or in Member State 2, 3. In case there is, they will need to check if it applies for non-established companies, because remember, this is a, a Spanish based company. Um, so they are not based in, in member state two or three. And even if e-invoicing does not apply to non-established companies in these two, in two member states, they need to check if there is any other real-time reporting obligation in place. So they will need to adapt in order to be able to provide to the tax authorities the information as required. Again, remember that we have this overview about e-invoicing in, in our website that you can, you can check. And just very quick to finalize, a quick word on Batify, which is our Marosa solution. It's a VAT reporting software. It's a one-stop shop solution for all the VAT reporting, data analytics, workflows, and soon it will also include an electronic invoicing module. This will mean that Batify will be able to produce 
the electronic invoices, uh, we'll also be able to report them to the tax authorities as and when required. And all this data will already be in, 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 the, in the tool and will be reused for preparing the BAT returns. So if you want to uh, book a demo, feel free to join us for that. We, the team will be more than glad uh, to help you with it. And that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexia. That was quite interesting. I hope our audience uh, was quite engaged. I know we said we're gonna send the recording and presentation, uh, but we enable chat function and Q&A function for any additional questions. However, if you don't have them at the moment, you can send it to us directly. Um, although I do have a question regarding United Kingdom. I know we haven't mentioned that um, too much or we haven't referred to that, but um, I think a lot of fuel card businesses are also uh, operating in the UK. So maybe if you can give us a little bit of insights what's happening there. Well, yeah, at the moment there is uh, no um, e-invoicing mandate plans for the UK. It is only mandatory for a very um, a specific transactions in the B2G area, I believe related to the health sector, uh, but not really, uh, is not really planned for to be implemented at a, at a global scale for B2B transactions. And as far as I know, it's not uh, concerning, it's, it's neither implemented concerning other areas of the B2G transactions apart from this health sector. Okay, that's great. And you also mentioned that from this year, Romania is um, also implementing or enforcing uh, e invoicing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned they might uh, apply the centralized model. Uh, mm -hmm. Would that apply the re to the real time reporting or to the e invoices? Maybe. Uh, uh, on both? Yeah, it's a quite interesting question. So Romania has implemented uh, as of January a new reporting obligation uh, for businesses both established and non-established um, concerning all the B2B domestic transactions and as from July uh, this year for only for established businesses in Romania they will be they will have to issue also electronic invoices however for the non established businesses what will remain is the obligation of e reporting or real time reporting this means that all your invoices issued will have to be reported to the tax authorities in a period of five days after its issuance. This is why we call it real-time reporting or almost uh, or near real-time reporting of, of your transaction data. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. I think we're going to need to cover a separate session on Romanian invoicing. It's quite yeah. new. Um, <laughs> And you also mentioned a VIDA proposal on the level of the um, EU. Does that mean because uh, different obligations apply across different EU member com countries? But if VIDA comes into a full um, regulatory uh, kind of a main debt, uh, does that mean that we need to unify invoicing solutions across all the country members in only one solution? Or they're still considering that we're going to have a different you know, reporting models, solutions, et cetera? Well, that's a very good question and also a point where member states cannot um, agree on, <laughs> in fact. Yeah, uh, compatibility and interoperability are key. So what BIDA says is that at least all e-invoice uh, invoicing formats are compatible with the European standard. But this European standard, um, I didn't stop by on, on it because maybe it's too technical, but this European standard can be uh, specified country by country. So the countries make their adjustments, even industries make their adjustments to this um, format. Uh, so in the end, what we will have is one common format and one reporting um, system for what it concerns the intercommunity transactions, that is what BIDA can really um, legislate on or mandate, the intercommunity transactions. However, for the domestic transactions, each member state will have its own format and system. Of course, the, all the e-invoices uh, must be compatible with the European standard, but probably there will be changes country by country.
Uh, we cannot hear you, Veronica, I think, or it's me. Thank you. Okay. So I just said, it. I think it's going to be quite interesting to see at the end uh, what type of model or regulations are going to be implemented. But definitely we saw from your presentation, there are uh, significant benefits for the businesses to actually comply uh, with those rules. Um, and maybe just la one last question. Is there anywhere on site um, Switzerland? Uh, what happens there? What is happening there? If we have any insights. In Switzerland, yeah, well, the for the B2B area, there are yet no plans, uh, as far as I know, of implemented and, and implementing an invoicing mandate. Uh, they have, however, uh, a mandate on B2G transactions. This is uh, transactions from businesses to governments or local admin administrations. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm just going to uh, give uh, a word to our new head of partnership, Stephen Andrew, that I introduced at the beginning. Um, and then we're going to uh, start closing the webinar. Okay, um, well, first of all, thank you, Alexia and Veronica, for delivering such a, an informative and topical uh, webinar. Uh, e invoicing is incredibly interesting it's uh, so many people organizations are wanting to know more about it and it's of course very very timely um to um uh, jose thank you very much indeed for organizing things on your end on behalf of the um upei uh, it's very much appreciated and to the attendees if you'd like to know more information about what's been covered today or maybe you're interested in the, the wider services at Morosa, in particular, uh, the tech enabled and the SaaS Vatify offerings, please feel free to uh, reach out to us and we'll be more than, um, more than happy to address uh, any points or inquiries you may have. And, uh, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.